Monkey House was my kind of brainchild. Uh, it's been around in one form or another since 1992 and has evolved substantially over the years to the point where now there's a, there's a core roster for the group and we're really dialed into a certain sound. When it started out, it was really uh, nothing more than an outlet for songs of mine that hadn't been played by other artists. Now, it's absolutely flipped to where it's sort of my musical priority and I'm actively writing specifically for this project a lot of the time. The core of Monkey House is me, Mark Kelso, Pat Kilbride, Justin Abbott, and the, that quartet is the core of it now. There are horn players, guest stars, percussionists, guest vocalists, and some of those people will be back, including Lucy Woodward on backup vocals and a lot of the horn players from Toronto. The four of us really have gotten to the point where we don't have to explain a lot to each other. Everybody knows what this band is supposed to sound like and where the bar is playing wise. Most of the time, Don kind of has a roadmap as to what he wants to see happen. And through that process of recording, things evolve and you know I get to offer my ideas, whether it be voicings or sounds or guitars or pedals or, or whatever. But in general, I would say that, that Don is, you know, the, the visionary and creator of the sound and, you know, I'm, I'm here to, to execute the parts. Don sends us demos of the tunes first before we play them and nobody writes for bass like Don does. A lot of times I just want to play what he's written. He's written very creative parts that are specific, but I like them. A lot of times now you walk in and a guy just has a lead sheet and it just kind of says, oh, do whatever you want. And people might think that that's what you want to do all the time. So when someone writes out clever lines, you know, it makes me look good. People hear the record later. I always tell Don this and they go, hey, you sound great. I go, these parts were, you know, most of those parts are things that Don comes up with. And they're things that I wouldn't come up with. He hears it that way and, and they're oftentimes like, you know, very important parts of the composition and uh, can be specific at times, but it always really, really makes sense and there's always room, so I don't really like changing them that much. The playing is great, the music is great, the hang is great. That's, that's one of the most important things is that interaction with uh, people who are friends and we've known each other for a long time. It's just great to see everybody and, and, uh, and create music. I love the new material. I mean, Don is such a great, prolific writer that uh, I always know whatever he sends is going to be fantastic. So these tunes are as good as everything he's ever done. I mean, he just keeps the consistency really high. Fun grooves, uh, fun tunes, really hooky tunes, you know, from listening to the demos over and over, I found myself just singing them constantly when I was away from them going, what song is that? Oh, that's one of Don's new tunes. When I get here to the studio, I know that those guys have really internalized the songs. So yeah, they're reading off the page, but they have a, a strong understanding of the tunes so that we can right out of the gate do an authoritative performance of each song and not have it sound tentative. Usually we have it by like second, third take. It's a testament to the musicianship and the writing and um, people never lose their chemistry as a group, whether it's two of us or four of us, it's like we all kind of resume our roles in an unspoken way. So, you know, humanity continues. One of the ones that particularly is, uh, I think, going to be a favorite, we haven't recorded it yet, is uh, Skin in the Game, because that comes from a groove that I lifted off of uh, a Bernard Purdy drum clinic when I was 18 years old. I saw him do this groove, and I never forgot it. It was so killer. I was working with Don with Eleanor McCain doing a Christmas show uh, with the Kitchener uh, Waterloo Symphony. And uh, I just started doing that in sound check, and Don ran over and says, what's that groove, what's that groove? Just did that, and he's like, hang on, I gotta record that. 
and he recorded it. And then when he played the demo back, there's my, you know, my uh, my drum part that he just recorded on uh, on my on his phone there in the middle of the song. So I think that's going to be one that's really fun. The germ of the songs for me uh, are usually the titles. I'll end up with a phrase or a title that hangs around in my notebook that if I haven't crossed it off after a point, and it, that's just kind of the first pebble that goes in the water and, and starts rippling, and the process starts there for me. I know everyone does it differently, but I'm a title guy. I'd like to do something that's fundamentally playable and singable on a keyboard with me just sitting there warbling away. And if I like it then, then I know for sure I'm gonna like it when, uh, when I sick the big dogs on it and, and it becomes a monkey house song. I think lyrically Don always likes to you know, talk about things that, that are current, but then he also has a slant on things. Like there's a song on this record called Remember the Audio that recalls the days of AM radio and the bands that he grew up with. He's a guy that likes to, to honor things from his past that, that are really important to him, but then also come up with like characters, looking at situations from a slightly different angle. There's shuffles, there's like really heartfelt kind of piano ballady type of songs, a couple of pop tunes. So I, I think it just picks up where Friday left off and is a nice evolution and continues the sound of the band. And I, you know, I think fans of this band will, will really enjoy this record. I would say that there's maybe a little darkness that seeped in through the cracks during lockdown and sort of end of the world feelings uh, sprinkled on some of these tunes. But uh, I think that fundamentally they're all sort of grooving hooky, standard issue, monkey house type material. In a way, only I know that uh, they're tinged by COVID and, and the last 18, 20 months.